I just came across this post on Reddit saying engineer on my team sometimes defines and immediately calls functions, wanted opinions on if it is poor style or just something I'm not used to. And then they gave this example where they assign apples to the result of this IIFE. So here they get the fruit, they pass in data, they do some validation here, then they filter the fruits, they map over them, and finally they filter them. And so everything is now inherently scoped to this variable. You're not leaking any of this logic outside of where it is actually used. And in this case, it is assigning the result of this computation over to this variable. Now, this pattern is way more common than you think because you want to create a constant variable and instead of using a let and then doing all of the logic and leaking that logic into the scope of this variable, you declare all of that within this function and you invoke it right away. Now, if I scroll down, the first comment is my brain would likely pass over the invocation at the end and I would spend the next 10 minutes thinking apples is supposed to be a function and wondering where the function is being called. Now, to be fair, if you're using a decent theme that distinguishes functions from variables, then this wouldn't be an issue to begin with. And if you use TypeScript, even less. You can just hover over apples and you would see that it is an array and not a function. So I'm not entirely sure where this applies unless you use something like nano with zero syntax highlighting and no IntelliSense running. Anyway, the other comment is it's called IIFE and it is a fairly common method for certain things, mostly pertaining to limiting the scope of variables and kinda dealing with things like JavaScript not having much. And this is entirely true. JavaScript doesn't have a much. So if you want to create a much and assign that to a variable, you either have to create a function, an IIFE, or use a third party library. And then they say, or basically anything where you want to assign a variable using more complex but one of logic. And this is entirely true. If your logic is very complex or you need to reuse it somewhere else, create a function. But if it's one of logic, then there is no need to create a function. Now you might argue, but hey, functions are explicit. You can declare a good name for a function. And instead of having to read through all of this code, you just read the name of the function and you're good to go. Now that's true, but this is already clear enough because you know that this is going to give you apples back. Hence, const apples is equal to all of this. However, you do not get the where because if you have a function, you would say get apples from fruits. But again, if it's one of logic, this is completely fine. Now, there's this other comment. Using an IIFE to encapsulate complex initialization is such a popular pattern that it has jumped languages. Here, C++ guidelines, for example, that explicitly recommends using immediately invoked function expressions slash lambdas, as this pattern lets you scope and dispose any temporary variables that were used just for initialization. And this pattern lets you mark the final result as const. So this is entirely true. The idea of using an IIFE is all you need to do is say const some variable is equal to, and then you can have eight to 10 lines of code, and there was no need to use a let or to create a separate function and add more mental overhead as you now have a hundred functions for every single piece of code that requires more than just one liners. If I were stuck without any pipes or without options, which I'm going to show you, or much like TS pattern, I would stick to IIFEs. They aren't the best readability wise, but I would say this is still a great option. Now, if you're not familiarized with options, let me show you a quick demonstration of what they are. So options are these. They simply have a sum and a none. That's it. So some represents the presence of a value and none represents the absence of a value. Now this is equivalent to say some value here or null or well 
or undefined. In the case of JavaScript, where you have both. So from the outset, you can say TypeScript already supports options implicitly because you can have unions of or null or undefined, which represents a none. And that's true. But they are great to build pipes. So for example, we can have some value and this can be undefined or null or a string. Why null or undefined? Because that's the API schema of your server. Now you can say option dot from nullable and then you pass in some value. So let me import option. And as you can see, the result is an option of and we get never. I'm not sure why. OK, so now we get string. Seems like TypeScript was able to narrow down the type here, maybe the new 5.5 version. But anyway, as you can see, this type here represents the sum. So the option this is a sum of a string. So this right here. Now this is incredibly useful because you can pipe this and then you can say option from nullable and then you can say option dot map and then you can maybe retrieve the length of the value. So what map is going to do is receives the sum value and returns a new option. So if we take a look at the signature of map, as we can see, returns an option of number. Now the reason it returns an option and not just the value, in this case the length of the sum, is because we can chain this through. That's the idea of using options, is that you can compose them. Now at the end of the pipe you can say option dot get or else and then you can say default and this is going to give us the value we build, so in this case the length of value, or if this was none, so when it's undefined or null, this is going to be the none, then we're going to default back to this. So think of this like a default value in the case we get a none in the pipe. And that's basically it. Now you can say result is equal to this. And if we take a look at the type of result, it's a string or a number. Now, how would you do this without an option? Well, you could say result two is equal to some value is different from null and some value is different from undefined. If so, then get the length. Otherwise, default back to this one right here. Now, I like using explicit comparisons. I enforce this rule at the linter level, so at slint, to prevent any type of bugs with falsy and truthy values. But as you can see, this can perhaps be more readable because you can even keep mapping over this. You can say, OK, we now multiply the length by two. And now this is way more declarative. This would be imperative. Now, most of the times I wouldn't use options to transfer data. For example, a function that returns an option. That's not something I like that much unless I know the consumer has to compose the result. So if I know the consumer will have to do something like this, then I'll go ahead and make it return an option. But most of the times, I prefer letting the consumer be the one that dictates whether or not to use options and not force them into using them. So if you were to see my code, I would only use options to compose values, perform some transformations and call it a day. Now let's go to a real example. Let's say we get this phone number from an API and we need to render it in the UI. But it's a one of logic. There is no reason to create a function that is format phone number. We would love to be able to do it right within our JSX template and not have to create a function, pull that from another file or whatever. Well, for that, again, you can use IIFEs. And in this case, I'm using parse phone number from leave phone number JS. And this is going to throw an error if the number is not in a correct format. So this becomes problematic because we cannot just say parse phone number and then format international because this will throw an error. So for that, we need to create an IIFE or a function and then we can do a try catch and we default back to the original number. So see how cumbersome this is. With options, it is actually very readable. All you need to do is say const parse phone number is equal to pipe and then you pass in the original number. So this is our starting point. And then we can say option dot 
and then lift throwable. So as we can see, a utility function that lifts a function that throws exceptions into a function that returns an option. So this allows the developer to handle the exception in a more functional way. So if we say lift throwable and then we pass in parse phone number, if this were to throw, then we get a none, and if not, we get the value in the sum. So now we can map this over, and then we can say parse number dot format international, and then we can say get or else, and then the default value is simply the original number. And if I take a look at the type signature, as you can see, it is a string. So this is a great way to do this. You now have it in line without creating an IIFE. The computation is composed via a pipe using option. Now, another example. Let's say we have this first event square. We have some numbers. We find the first number that is even. If it is undefined, we return null. Otherwise, we square the first even. We check if it's greater than 50. If so, return null. Otherwise, return the square number. How would you do this with an option? Well, it's actually very simple. You say pipe, you take in the array, and then you can actually take in array from effect, which already includes the options for you. And all you need to do is say array dot find first, you take in each number, and then you check if it's even. And if so, this is going to give you back an option, as you can see here, an option of number. So then you can just say map, and then you square this, and then you can filter this if you want. And this is actually less than or equal to 50. So if this predicate is true, then we keep the sum value, otherwise it will be assigned to a non-value. And then you can say option.get or null, and that's it. This is everything. And in my opinion, I prefer this any day over this approach. One last example. Let's say we have this query function, we hit our API, which is a slash posts and then first, and this is going to return to us a tuple of one element. So this could be expressed like this, or null or undefined. But you need to transform it using your DTOs so it is in a better format and whatnot. Well, in this case, options are great because you're handling nullable values, but you also need to map over the sum value and apply the DTO. And if not, you want to standardize things and remove the undefined. You only want to have either the post, not as a tuple, or null. Well, for that, all you need to do is say pipe and let me import everything. So import pipe and option from effect. And actually, let's also bring array. And then we can come here and we can invoke query function. And then we can say option from nullable. And then we can say option dot flat map and then array dot head. And then we can say option dot map and then option get or null and result is equal to this and as we can see we get either the post the transformed post by our dto or null now let's go over line by line we invoke this we get the tuple or null or undefined we transform it into an option so now this will be the sum and this will be the none. Although, well, you wouldn't get the null or undefined in the none. It's just none absent. And then we use flat map. Now, why flat map? Well, because array.head will return to us an option. If we were to omit the flat map and then we were to map over this result, the type of result will be an option wrapped within an option of post which is not what you want. So you want to flatten this. You want to take this sum and extract it. So now we get the sum here. And instead of nesting the none with the sum, you extract it over. And so you flatten it, which is pretty much like having a nested array. And then you say flat. The same logic applies. So you unnest the options. And then you can say option.map. You pass in the function, implicitly takes in the data, which is the first element. And then all you need to do is say option get or null, and that's it. As you can see, this is great. There is no need to write pretty much anything. You do not need to write if statements. 
handle the returns, whatever. Everything is handled declaratively by using options. Anyway, this wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and like the video. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.